Hello there. Today I'm lucky enough to be in southern France in the Herault, in the Gassac Valley at Mar de Dumas Gassac. The wine I have in my glass is Mar de Dumas Gassac Blanc 2022. So this is a wine that is designated as an IGP from saint guillem le Desert. When this wine was first produced, it was made as a Van der Pedel Herault, but now it has its own special designation there. So the property here is a wonderful example of organic viticulture and biodiversity. It was purchased in the late 60s and developed in the early 70s by the late Ami Guibert and his wife Veronique. And originally, he was a leather maker and, and she was a, a university lecturer and they were living around Montpellier and they were looking for somewhere to purchase to live and they found this beautiful plot up in the hills that was inhabited by, by an older man and his two sisters and the property had fallen into some disrepair and they came and they planted vines and they, they resurrected the place and very much here you have a large area of the Garrigue, the sort of the, the forest and scrub of southern France, individual vineyards cut into that. Now the, the white wine here is a blend of a diverse number of varieties grown on calcareous soil, broken limestone, in the higher cooler portions of, of the vineyards here. So the vineyards on the estate go up to about 300 meters above sea level and it's those higher vineyards that are used for the whites. So this particular wine is a blend, it's predominantly Viognier, 48%, with 13% of Chardonnay, 13% of Menseng. Now they don't say that's Petit Menseng, Gros Menseng, or a combination of them both. There's also 9% of Chardonnay, and then the remaining 17% is simply described as other varieties. Now, those other varieties include varieties such as Claret, Muscat, Marsan, Roussin. Now, this particular wine was picked over a period of five days. The fruit was initially picked into shallow baskets and taken straight to the winery. It's not more than 10 minutes to get here in these shallow baskets. Sorted here, de-stemmed, crushed, and went into stainless steel tank. And there, in the presence of oxygen, it was allowed to macerate, to do what they call it, a maceration pelliculaire. And that allows some oxidation to go on and oxidizes the precursors of oxidation, which therefore ensures the wine is more oxygen stable after fermentation. So to cool for this maceration pelliculaire for a few days, then fermentation goes on at about 20 degrees C. So relatively cool fermentation, not too quick retaining all the lovely aromas of those beautiful varieties being used. My memory is that older vintages of this had been aged in oak. Evidently they don't feel the need to do that anymore because the vines are now older. Some of these vines are 40 years old. So the concentration of the fruit that, that is here means they don't need oak aging for the extra weight. In fact, they felt, felt, felt that the oak really rather closed the wine up. Now, the other thing to mention is that the viticulture here is entirely organic, although I, I don't see an organic certification on the label. But the other thing is that there is so much concentration on biodiversity and sustainability here. Very much it was decided when, when the, the family set out, in fact, Veronique decided that, that she didn't want any trees cut down while the vineyards were being planted. So there's always been an intention to look after the wildlife in this location. And in fact, on the audio of this video, I hope you can hear the wonderful diversity of bird song that's going on. You've possibly seen the insects, there are butterflies flying around everywhere. This is a really beautiful part of the world and it feels really tranquil and really natural. This is a place where farming has never involved chemicals. The, the old man who farmed the property before the Guibers just used to plough with a horse. He didn't own a tractor. There were no chemicals used here. Somehow the, the bi biodiversity that's here actually makes this place even more special. So anyway, let's see what we make of the wine, shall we? The first thing to say is looking at the colour, it's it's a medium to deep yellow. It's, it's lovely and vibrant. There's almost a slight greenish hint to it and yet it's got a lovely depth. Now the wine only has 13.5% alcohol but it's actually throwing some some quite noticeable tears there on the side of the glass and I think some of that is the skin contact the maceration pelliculaire making it quite a, a viscous wine. So let's see what we make of the aromas. The aromas are beautifully intense. I, I, I really could stand here and smell them for, for a long time. There's a richness, it's a rich ripe stone fruit that comes to the fore. There's an intensity of 
apricot, almost to a dried apricot richness. There's ripe nectarine, there's ripe peach. Those notes are all there. It's, it's almost as if there's a vanilla note, and yet we know that the wine hasn't seen any oak. It's just the richness and the juiciness of the fruit doing that. Lovely, but I must move on and taste it. On the palate, the wine's completely dry. There's a lovely freshness at the front of the mouth. And all the richness of the aromas is there with a sort of a ripe apricot and juicy nectarine note from the outset. And yet, it actually develops into a, into a much more fresh, lean and elegant note from the mid-palate onwards. It's almost like you've got the sort of the two different iterations of Condrio in one glass. You've got that real richness and ripeness to begin with, and then you've got the more delicate, elegant and slightly minerally note that you have with the more elegant style of Condrio. And they're both developing in the same glass, which is fantastic. Towards the finish, you've, you've got almost a sort of a honeyed richness, and yet no sweetness, but there is just such a lovely intensity. As I say, again, it's almost as if there's a vanilla in there. And then actually, that's the other thing. The wine is a mid-weight. It's got balanced alcohol and yet the texture, there's a lovely almost sort of velvetiness to the texture. The wine's lasting really well because this fresh mineral acidity at the very end that's not inhibited by particularly high alcohol. This is a really lovely wine. I suspect it will age for four or five years quite happily, but at the same time it certainly wouldn't in my cellars because it's so attractive now. It's got that intensity, it's got so much complexity and a beautiful harm. So yes, a really lovely wine. So thank you so much for joining us. I do hope you've enjoyed the tasting. If you have, do please press the like button. If you have friends you think might like to watch it, do please share it with them. We'd be most obliged if you would. If you'd like to watch more of these tastings, do please sign up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any comments, please leave those in the comments box below. That would be fantastic. We'd love to hear what you think about the wines, the tasting, or anything else relating to that. I'll leave a link to the page that we have for this wine on our Wine Searcher website so you can find more information about pricing, availability and any other background information you'd like to find there. So thank you so much for joining us and I do hope you'll find some time and come and join us for another tasting in the very near future. Bye for now.